for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And on today's episode, I'm focusing on where is your man leading you? Yes, this is the question that I'm posing to you. And I'm going to help you answer this question. A lot of times when I'm listening to my clients or friends, even family, um, looking on social media, I see a lot of us uh, women questioning where we're being led. And if the person who we're with um, has leadership potential or leadership skills so that we can feel safe, so that we can sit in our feminine, so that we can be directed or guided, okay? So some of these things that I'm gonna pose to you are gonna make you sit and question, are you with a partner who is leading you? And it's also gonna make you reflect um, so that you can assess, do you need to step in where you need to lean in more? Um, I'm a firm believer that, um, and I've done an episode before, that the alpha queen can be with the alpha king. And whether you are um, a beta or an alpha and dating a beta or an alpha, it doesn't really matter. You still want leadership skills when it comes to your partner, or at least leadership quality, should I say, so that you can feel safe and so that you can trust where they're directing you. But particularly when it comes to dating, um, we want to know someone's intent with us. We want to know um, where they're taking us along this journey. And I want you to be able to quickly assess whether the type of guy who you're interested in is a leader, in fact, okay? Because people can pose all day long and pretend that they're this amazing, confident person when it you know, comes to being with you, but then their actions aren't supporting that. So I want to give you the telltale signs so that you know when you're a leader. The other thing that I'm going to do is also be extremely vulnerable as usual and um, reference my relationship when it comes to my partnership. As you guys know, I am um, an extremely strong alpha queen. I rep all day long that I um, operate very much in my masculine energy, but I've had to um, not just for myself and my relationship lean into my feminine, but also coach women on how to be strong and lean into their feminine as well and be able to make a healthier relationship from that. Let's begin. Okay, first let's define like what an actual leader is. And what I have is that a leader is someone who can um, be a route or means of access to a particular place or leading you in a particular direction. Um, the initiative and action and an example for others to follow. So when this comes to relationship, is your partner setting an example for you to follow? Are they giving you um, telltale steps of the direction that you guys are going? Let's go deeper into the first sign, okay? So number one, let me talk to you about what makes a great leader. They're self-aware and they prioritize personal development. So what this looks like is you being with someone who has a growth mindset. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, you could be with a very confident man who is extremely intelligent, but is he always trying to absorb information? Does he have a thirst for knowledge? Is he trying to learn more? Um, and is he interested in the things that you have to teach him? Uh, an example of this would be my um, Spicy Life e-course, My Purpose Mate Awaits. Um, for this course that I offer, it's uh, six weeks long and there's a ton of curriculum that comes with it, a growth guide and a passion plan. Um, my husband wanted to make sure that he understood the material that I was giving everyone, and he went as far to go through the entire program um, and even edit it, looking for corrections, making sure that like it was on point for you guys, but also he wanted to absorb the information. He wanted to know like what these concepts are that I was out there giving, okay? This is just an example of his like growth mindset. He's like, hmm, I know I'm in a relationship with a relationship expert, but there's still an opportunity for me to learn here. Let me absorb some of this knowledge. Your dude may be someone who's listening to podcasts, maybe he's reading books, maybe he's taking courses, um, maybe he um, has a mentor, okay, it's going to look like this constant um, thirst for knowledge and information um, that he can use to expand his universe, okay, the second thing that you can recognize when your man is a leader, um, and a great one at that is that they focus on developing you. <laughs> So it's not just their own personal growth. They also want to see you grow. Uh, a great example of this would be um, in my personal experience, right? Um, I suck at numbers. I talk about this all the time. Um, not very good with finance. And my husband was like, that's unacceptable. I need to be able to trust your financial decision making. I'm going to teach you QuickBooks. I'm going to teach you how to run these spreadsheets so that that way, not only can you um, make sure that you're, you know, crossing your T's and dotting your I's, but that way you can see um, your growth. You can actually like 
take accountability for the progress that you're making and you don't have to be 100% dependent on me. So he pushed me in that direction. Also, when it comes to like my spicy assessment that I give my clients, this is um, based on my spicy method. I um, give you a 140 questionnaire that comes in when you first are starting with the spicy life. I didn't know how to pull this data up. I didn't know how to create the assessment. Um, I just knew the questions that I needed to ask, all right? So not only did he build it out, but then he was like, now you're gonna learn how to take this data and um, read it and then be able to create a actual like relationship portfolio for your clients so that that way you can explain it to them clearly and you don't have to be dependent on me. And I was like, this is amazing. Don't really feel like taking the time to do this. However, I appreciate the fact that you want to grow me and it will make me better in my profession. Let's go do it. Okay. So I'm just giving you guys examples of, um, in my personal experience, what I've witnessed and things that I want you to pay attention to when it comes to um, the pros and cons of your relationship and where you see your partner trying, okay, where you see your partner trying to guide you. They encourage strategic thinking, innovation, and action. I'll give you an example of um, when this happened with us. Um, I suggested early on that there was this lot next door that I thought uh, we should totally buy. I was like, babe, let's hop on it. It's an empty lot and it will um, create more property value for us if we purchase it. And it also give us more square footage. Um, my husband was like, that sounds good, but it's unavailable. Okay. Uh, fast forward, uh, manifested that ish. And the owner of that lot winds up knocking on our door later, um, a few months later saying, Hey, we want to sell it to you. Um, my husband's like, you know what? I've been thinking that we should buy this lot. Let's go ahead and do it. Um, all the meanwhile, forgetting that like I'm the one who suggested it um, <laughs> and like moved on it and actually like made the purchase. Um, so this was like a win for us. Now, does it matter to me that I get the credit for the inception of the idea? Not so much. This is me sitting in my feminine um, <laughs> and not going back and forth with him. But the point is, is like the suggestion was made, action was took. Okay. And I want you to um, pay attention to if you're dating someone, if you're in a relationship with someone, are you making sound suggestions to them? And then are you seeing them actually move forward when the opportunity becomes available and discussing it with you in partnership? So let's keep going. They are ethical and partner-minded. This is another great sign of if your partner is a leader and if they're leading you in the right direction. Um, when I think about ethics, I think about also um, high morals, right? This moral compass of making the right decision. When it comes to decision-making time, are they choosing right or wrong? What I mean by that is, are they doing um, sometimes risky things, but that won't put you guys in trouble, right? So what I call these are like calculated risks whether it be in financial investments, um, whether it be decisions for your child's school, whether it be um, even in the dating world, um, things that they're exposing you to or places that they are taking you to. Um, is it safe places? Is it things that they know um, they'll get a return on their investment, right? So they're assessing, is the reward worth the cost? Um, so let's discuss this when it comes to dating. Uh, Female hollers at my dude while he's out. <laughs> my dude, I mean my husband, but um, love when he gets hit on, right? It's like flattering. My man still got it, um, all that good stuff. Um, a female's hitting on him while he's out with his boys. Now he's assessing the risk, right? Um, it feels good to have a woman hit on you. He's breaking it down and saying though, is it worth potentially breaking the trust in my relationship? Having my wife essentially maybe leave me um, and blowing up my entire life that I've been working so hard to build, um, breaking our finances in half, um, our home, uh, tearing our family apart, right? Is it worth all of that? And the person is thinking about this before they make the decision to um, feed their ego and fall prey to whatever external temptations may be out there, but they're assessing, they're constantly assessing like, is the risk worth the reward? Is the cost worth the reward? And so I want you to pay attention when you're dating someone and it comes to how they're treating you or how they're um, assessing uh, even commitment or loyalty towards you or making decisions that uh, in favor of your relationship, right? And have your best interest in mind. 
is it worth hurting the person who I'm trying to build with, right? Maybe you guys are just in the beginning of the dating phase, but they see potential in you or they really like who you are. How do they treat the people who they like? Um, do they risk losing someone who could essentially grow with them and be, uh, you know, a, a partner in their life? So this is how you're going to look and see like, hmm, how is this person treating me while I'm dating them? Next one, they practice effective communication. This one's hard for everyone. <laughs> this is the hardest. And this is the one that majority of people struggle with. And you guys come to me for um, when it comes to communication, because we all have different forms of communication. We all grew up differently. Um, we all grew up with uh, different parents who spoke to us differently or who ingrained certain uh, things that were important when it came to expressing ourselves, right? Some of us had permission, some of us didn't. So communication is always a challenge when it comes to wanting to feel seen, wanting to feel heard, and most importantly, understood by your partner. Uh, they aren't afraid to share their thoughts and goals, and they tailor their message in a way that you can comprehend and receive. So listening is just as important to them as talking. That's one thing that you want to pay attention to when you're dating is, does this person listen just as much as they speak? Are they asking me questions? Are they taking the time to get to know me? Um, because that's a great leader, leadership skill right there is communication. Do they understand the process of like sharing about themselves but also inquiring about you, okay? That's great leadership right there. And you wanna know like that this person is interested in getting to know the real you and that they're not just playing around or just interested you know, in having some fun or hooking up. Like they're actually gonna care about what you have to say. So it's gonna be a two-way street. I believe that the tailored message when it comes to communication is extremely important. So yes, you can speak your truth and be your authentic self, but I believe that when you take the time to learn your audience, you say it in a way, especially for partnership, that you know that your partner can digest. So if I'm complaining about my baby weight, my husband can say his maybe true inner thoughts, which is like, shut up and hop on the treadmill. Or he knows that's not gonna fly over with me and that's gonna hurt my feelings. What he can say is, babe, how about we um, go for a walk with the baby today? Or how about we go for a jog or um, go do a run on the beach together? That's one going to fuel my desire for like some romance in the relationship and doing some quality time partnership activity. But more importantly, it's tailored to my needs and it's also getting the end result that I keep complaining about, right? And we spoke earlier about like, is your partner like pouring into you? Do they motivate you? And this is a great way when it comes to communication, I'm using this as an example. This is a great way for you to see like, does this person tailor their message to reach me? Or is it a universal message or they speak universally across the board to everybody, not caring about making it specific towards what that person needs to hear in that moment. So that's a great leadership quality right there. It also entails emotional intelligence. So hopefully you've been working on that so that also you can spot and recognize when someone has it as well. Okay. And a lot of these leadership things that I'm telling you, I'm going to want to see you ladies replicate as well for your dude. So as you have these and you're listening to this podcast episode, I don't want you to feel like we're just going to tear someone apart looking for these things, because if you don't have it and you're not reflecting this or capable or practicing this on a normal basis, you're also not going to be able to spot it out or even articulate that you need this quality and be able to pull it out of him. Because I'm a firm believer that you too can guide your male partner. Questions to discuss with your partner or your person that you're dating to see where the hell that they're leading you, all right? I want you to be very clear on these types of questions. They're extremely important, but they also help you navigate so that you know if you're being led in the right direction. But also, I want you to be very clear on where you want to be led. Oftentimes, we're asking for someone to lead us, right? We're like, I want the strong um, male who knows where he's going in life and he, who knows where he wants to take me. Okay, well, where do you want to go? Have you articulated where you want to go? Because if you haven't, then one, you don't know if you're on the same page with him. And then two, if you know where you're going, you also can envision and start to be also in alignment behaviorally with your own actions that represent that you're going there. And so therefore you're not going to settle for anything less than the things or the behaviors that are in alignment with where we're going, right? If he's trying to lead you left and you're like, no, nope, but in life, I've decided that I want to go right then you and him are not on the same page and we need not trust his direction because it's not going the same place that you're trying to go. So let's do um, someone who wants a commitment versus someone who doesn't, all right? You know that you want a commitment. 
he's telling you that um, he doesn't see a relationship in the future for him. He just wants to have a good time right now. Okay, that's not someone who's leading you right. He's going left. So we need not follow that direction because you know and are very clear on where you want to go. And he's very clear on where he wants to go as well. The goal is not to try to convert him. The goal is to understand and to see and to be clear that you guys aren't compatible and then to make your own decisions that serve your goal. All right, so these are the questions that you're going to discuss with your partner so that you know where you guys are going, okay? Number one, you're going to ask, um, how do you define success in your career? And how do you define success in a relationship, all right? So these are two important questions, but you're going to have it all in the same conversation. Number two, you're going to ask, uh, what are your career goals and relationship goals, right? So there's the first one, which was how do you define success? The next one is like, what are your goals? Um, this is not going to feel, and I don't want this to feel job interviewee. Um, I want you to, in order to make this conversation go smoothly, share some of the things that you believe are success and some of the things that you believe are goals. And then you toss it back to them, asking them the same question. How do they feel about what you just said? And then can they share their feelings and sentiments on it for themselves? Next one, what do you think I can learn from you? So this is a great one. Oftentimes people don't have an answer to this. I hope right now that you're thinking about this question and you're asking what you can teach as well, okay? Because I can give you a list of right now, 10 things that you can learn from me if you're in relationship with me or even just exposed or next to me. Do you have 10 things that you can teach him? Because if you're expecting to learn from him or expecting um, him to answer that question and then he tosses it back to you and you're unprepared about what he can learn from you, you're going to be super salty because you're going to be looking like beautiful. So make sure that you have your list of things that someone gains in partnership with you or in relationship with you, okay? What do you think that you can learn from me? So similar to the lines of what do you think that I can learn from you, what do you think that you can learn from me? Reason we're asking this question is because you want to see his perception of you. You want to see if he actually thinks that you're smart and brilliant and that he loves your mindset. You want to see what his actual interest is in you and if it's authentic, if there, he thinks that maybe you're superficial, maybe he thinks you're super deep, maybe he thinks that you can expose him to um, better decisions in life, maybe he thinks that you're cultured and you can expose him to um, the arts or um, a different social life, what is it that he thinks that he's going to be able to gain by being in relationship with you? Next one, uh, how can I show up for you in a way that can help support those goals, right? So he's listed all these things to you. Now you ask what your role is in it. How can I show up for you, baby, to help you achieve those things? Ask him what part he wants you to play. This is great questions to ask your leader because now he knows that you're part of the team. And if he's leading you in a, a healthy direction or he has a great vision for the future for you guys, He's going to be clear on not just what his vision is, but also the things and the people that he needs in order to make that dream come true. And it's going to help you buy more into it when you know what role you have to play. Okay, so you're just not throwing darts at, a, at the board. Uh, next one, how do you think that you can contribute to me achieving mine, right? We all have goals. Um, and if you don't, like, let that be the first assignment. <laughs> but we all have these goals that we're trying to achieve. You want someone who is your purpose mate. You want someone who can help you with that mission in life, who can help you fulfill your purpose in life. And if you're clear on what your goals are, you should also be able to know how he can help you and listen to his examples that he's giving of whether he thinks like he can serve you in that area or not. Maybe he doesn't think that he can help you achieve your goals and doesn't think that there's any added value. You want someone who's confident, who's a visionary and who can direct your footsteps and who's also willing to tell you the truth about yourself when sometimes you're not making smart decisions. Um, we don't always want to hear this, right? Um, I'm going to be truthful and tell you I've made some poor financial decisions in my past. And I was um, financially intimate with my husband before we got married and laid it out there what he was signing up for, okay? I had um, student loans. Um, I had some medical bills that I was still paying off and uh, had to be truthful about those things, right? My debts. And 
then um, so that I wouldn't scare him off, also had to let him know, hey, here's what I'm doing in order to switch it up. Here's what I'm doing in order to solve for those challenges that I have. Here's my vision for how I'm going to rectify the situation that I got myself into, right? Of course, I want somebody who's also thinking about how they're going to solve for that too, but I don't want him to think that it's all on him. So we communicate, hey, this is the plan that I have so that you don't have to feel like you have to take on this whole burden should you inherit me and inherit everything I come with. (laughs) But most importantly, um, like I said, you want someone who is thinking about um, how to problem solve for some of your challenges that may impede some of those goals, right? So listen to what he has to say about some of the goals that you have um, and whether he believes in them or not. Cause I think that's super important for me. I need somebody who believes in me. Like I'm going to be tough on myself. I'm going to be my biggest critic. Right. And I have bigger than life dreams. Do you believe that I'm capable of achieving those? And with our powers combined, do you see that happening? Because I need someone who even on my hardest days when I'm talking to myself or I feel like put myself down, you're going to say like, get out of that mindset. We got work to do. Okay. Um, That is a true leader right there. Uh, Next one is what do you think is fair for a woman's financial contribution to the household to be? This one's touchy. (laughs) Reason why I say for y'all to um, ask this one is because your financial contribution matters, right? You have your own income. You have uh, hopefully set yourself up in a position where you can provide for yourself. People come to me all the time and they are excited about what a dual income is going to bring them when I help them become the best version of themselves and find love, right? But We also have worked very hard to save. We've also worked hard to um, invest and make sure that we're living the lifestyle that we want, ladies. Now, this partner comes along and we need to have open communication with him about ideally what he wants you to bring to the table when it comes to maybe what he saw growing up and now he wants to um, mirror that, right? Maybe he grew up in a household where mom was 50-50, I don't play all that, but that's not to say that it doesn't serve you or that maybe you grew up in that type of household and that's what you would like for yourself, right? You have your own financial goals or you see your own financial contribution to your household to each his own. I just want to say, I want to say it's each his own. Okay. There is no wrong or right when it comes to what your contribution is. It's whatever you feel comfortable with and it's whatever makes you feel good. I am under the notion though, that this is a intimate conversation that has to be had before you guys get married, when you guys are actually dating and you get close enough to where you can trust this person um, with this kind of information and with this kind of conversation so that you know where they're leading you. And we don't want to set ourselves up for failure when this person has a certain expectation of what they think that you should be paying for. And I'm not talking about courtship and you paying for dates, right? Because that's a whole nother episode. Um, Because I definitely believe that they should be paying for the first few dates and then we offer, but I'll do a spicy tip on that later. What I'm talking about is like, what am I paying for when we get married, right? Am I paying for the lights, the mortgage? Am I paying for maybe the baby stuff? Like, what are your expectations of me? Um, Should we enter into a committed or, you know, marriage? What do you expect my role to be in how I contribute? I know this is going to be a hard conversation for you guys to have, but it must be had. We got to ask this question. Because you may have a different vision than they have. And this is a great opportunity for you guys to communicate this in advance before the relationship gets more serious so that you can see where their mindset is. And then also have an open and honest discussion so that understanding can be created so that maybe you guys can get on the same page if it is different. Next question. Uh, What areas do you think that I need to mature and grow? They may not be telling you this because they don't want to um, offend you. They don't want to hurt your feelings. They don't want you to get salty and maybe your sex lives be affected. Um, Maybe don't think that you can handle constructive criticism, but I think that this is a great question for you to ask because it allows an opportunity for you to step up in certain areas that maybe you're slacking. Um, Maybe that you're even unaware that's bothering him. And maybe there's some areas that, 
it could make him feel more secure in the relationship or buying into the idea of eternity with you. So um, be prepared for that answer. And all of these questions that we're asking, um, and then I'm telling you to ask, be mindful of your response, be mindful of your face expressions, be mindful of your pitch and your tone as you're having this conversation with him. Because if he finds like, see, I can't be 100 with you, or I can't tell you anything without you getting upset or defensive, he's going to fall back on being truthful. And he's also going to take this as a representation of um, when I try to be honest or transparent with you, it backfires on me. And we don't want to teach him that he can't communicate with us. So I just want you guys to be very mindful in how you receive the information. And um, if you can be affirmative, right? If, if you can, yes, and, okay? <laughs> the Spicy.